There are many secret rooms and things we don't know about in pretty much every government building there ever was, but there are a great deal of things we didn't know about one of the most important buildings in the United States. We certainly didn't know these things before now, but that's why these are hidden secrets inside the White House the public doesn't know about. Number 12. Presidential transition is a huge deal. While we are sitting there as a country with bated breath waiting for a new president to take his rightful place in the White House, the staff within the White House are running around getting every last minute thing done and out of the way before the new president arrives at his humble abode. The second everyone is out of the house and well on their way to the inauguration, the incredible staff gets to work. It might seem impossible, but the staff manages to change the entire interior of the White House for its next occupant in just six hours. Honestly, we don't think we could clean our bedroom in that amount of time. Don't think that the staff is just a few maids that change the sheets and dust the decor. With the change of the president comes a redecoration of the house that they live in, which is, in this case, the legendary White House. In just six short hours, the outgoing family has to be packed up. There has to be new rugs, mattresses, headboards, paintings, flowers, just about everything is changed to suit the incoming family's taste. As not to make the soon-to-be former president and family feel like they are being given the boot, absolutely nothing is done or moved ahead of time. The last time the president leaves the White House, he leaves it looking as it always had. Number 11. The job changes every four or six years. Just like with the furniture, linens, and decorations, the actual individual jobs of those employed at the White House differ and vary depending on the president in term. While it would undoubtedly be rewarding to serve at a place as prestigious as the White House, all the folks pictured here look like they're having a great time, we honestly don't know if we could deal with the stress this job description comes with. With certain managers these days, even with a written employee handbook accompanied by the company's guidelines, doing a job by the description isn't enough to satisfy them. We would be reading a whole different manual if we had to listen and adapt to what could possibly be an entire career change. Not that the president would fire you, although that is a possibility, but with each new leader comes a new family, new rules, new likes and dislikes, and new personalities to learn to love. Number 10. The whole place is a museum. Seeing as how the building itself is a historical monument, you shouldn't be surprised that the insides are museum-like. As one would expect from the most important home in the country, the White House has its own curators whose sole purpose is to keep track of every little thing in the White House. Even if it is just a chair or something as little as a candlestick, it still has its rightful place in this giant mansion. This job is extremely important since most of the pieces are many, many years old. Some things, like the chairs in the blue room, have been around for centuries. Here they are in this picture, lined up against the wall. Living here wouldn't be exactly like living in a museum, but it would be pretty darn close. Whatever the first family does, they should take great care not to have their kids or pets break anything that couldn't be replaced. Number 9. The job listings aren't listed It's pretty common knowledge that the classified section in the newspaper is a post with job listings from the surrounding areas. Even if you look in all of the classifieds in the areas surrounding the White House, you will never find one with a listing for a job to work there. These coveted positions are only filled by word of mouth, which means, just like with everything, it boils down to who you know. So it's the current employees you have to know first, since they will be the ones putting in the good word. But even if you somehow manage to get that good word, you still most most likely won't get the job. There have been numerous generations that have all worked for the first family, and since they vouch for each other, the new family member tends to be the next one hired for the open position. Number 8. The famous West Wing was supposed to be temporary. President Roosevelt had decided he wanted to keep his family life separate from his business affairs. Since the White House was his home, at least for a few years, he had an entirely new area constructed. This extra wing, called the Executive Office Building, was supposed to be a temporary building, just used for a short period of time. In 1909, when William Taft came aboard to take over the role as United States President, he liked the idea of the West Wing so much that he not only kept the new building appendage, but he also enlarged it and remodeled the interior. You can see a drawing of the proposal pictured here. When Taft made all the changes to the West Wing, he also made history when the remodel reshaped the president's office into the shape we know it today, the Oval. Number 7. 
the presidents are jokesters. Since the job is so well-to-do, it's surprising to imagine your president actually pulling pranks on the next incoming man. These pranks and jokes sometimes cause damage, like the time the staff of Bill Clinton pulled the W key from each one of the keyboards, left lewd messages, and to top it all off, they glued multiple desk drawers shut, all of which cost about $60,000. That seems like the perfect way to start a new job, cleaning the mess of the people who just left. When it came time for George W. Bush's team to leave behind their mark before they left, they disconnected and stole the connecting wires and receivers to the phones, as well as left a threatening note that said, we'll be back. But guess that never happened. Number six. The White House design isn't original. The White House is arguably the most important building in the whole country. But did you know that the White House itself, no matter how prestigious it is, is just a copycat? The design for the president's home was based off of blueprints for the Leinster House in Dublin, Ireland. The architect that had based the design on the house pictured here was Irish, so it's not hard to see why he chose an idea from his homeland. Since the Georgian-style Leinster House once housed the Duke and now houses the seat of Parliament, James Hoban, the architect, made a good choice in which building he picked to replicate. Number 5. The president's food is double and triple checked. Honestly, this shouldn't be a secret. It is true that we never hear of poison attempts through the president's food, but we're sure it still happens. The man is, in fact, the most important person in the country. Since the president is such an important figure in life and history, it's pretty obvious that he's going to receive gifts of all sorts during his presidency. Before the president is allowed to take even a bite, the entire meal, including the drink, has to make it through the rigorous inspection of both FBI and Secret Service screeners. This food goes through so many people, we wonder if it's even still hot by the time it gets all the way through the screening process. All we can picture here are the conveyor belts in the security section at the airport. You might be wondering what the president does if he finds something he likes while he's traveling. He sends it directly to his house, but it's addressed to staff so no one knows it's going to him. Number 4. The Prez and First Lady have code words for personal time. Although they maybe don't appear to be enjoying each other's company all the time, the current president and First Lady do like to spend alone time together. Because they are who they are, POTUS and FLOTUS, they are surrounded by security detail every step they take. Getting any sort of alone time seems like it would be really hard to come by, seeing that they are always being watched like a hawk. So, to combat these issues, the president and his wife go about their business and the Secret Service issues a special code. In these engagements, the president is referred to as Renegade, while the first lady is given the code name Renaissance. The words quality time is then termed discussing the Bosnian problem, although we can't see the problem here. The full-on version for POTUS and FLOTUS to steal away and act like teenagers is Renegade can't be disturbed now. He and Renaissance are discussing the Bosnian problem. Gross. Number three. The White House has literally been a zoo. No, we aren't making jokes about the people here. We are actually talking about animals. And man, there have been a lot living at the White House throughout the course of each presidency. We aren't going to mention any of the normal house pets like dogs or cats because there would simply be too many of them. Back in the day, Thomas Jefferson had a mockingbird that flew around the house. Theodore Roosevelt's daughter, Emily, had a pet snake. John Quincy Adams had an alligator that lived in the bathroom, while the two alligators Herbert Hoover's sons had roamed around the yard. Out of all the presidents, however, the one who had the strangest and most exotic pets was Calvin Coolidge and his wife Grace. Here she can be seen holding a raccoon, but they have had a bear cub, a bobcat, two lions, a wallaby, and a pygmy hippo as pets at the White House. Number 2. The oldest painting was almost destroyed. Pictured here is the oldest painting in the entire building, George Washington's portrait by Gilbert Stuart. The portrait hangs in the East Room, the place where the president holds meetings with the most prominent people in the world, but it wouldn't have made it here today if not for Dolly Madison. In the War of 1812, British troops came and torched the White House. The former First Lady, clearly thinking quickly, cut out the painting from the frame before she rolled it up and took it with her for safekeeping. It has since been reframed and it looks as good as new thanks to her. The only sad part about her daring rescue is that the original painting that was there was only a copy itself. The copier had even misspelled the words United States so that it read United States. Number 1. There is a shopping center under the White House. This is certainly not something we knew, but it is really a hidden secret the public isn't supposed to know about. Although you see the president and his staff shopping while abroad, you don't ever see him or his family dash into a mall stateside to shop. 
the reason for that is simply they don't go because they don't have to. And we aren't just talking about the current POTUS and FLOTUS. Although they could have each had their own shopping mall before Trump became president, they don't have to waste time now because they live on top of one. Apparently, underneath the White House is a mall of sorts. Not only does it have some of the best clothing in the world, some of which you can see on the racks in this picture, but there are also services such as a florist, a carpenter, and even a dentist. 